All right, let's look at our question. Question four, the diagram below represents the distribution of chromosome, a chromosome pair 21, as it appears in the gametes at the end of meiosis two in a human male. All right, so what are we looking at here? We're looking at little sperm cells, which means all these little sperm cells are going to be haploid. But this one is empty, that one's empty, and only these two are here. So you know what? I know what's happened. This is a perfect example of non-disjunction. Okay, non means no, bad, don't do it. And disjunction means to separate. Okay. So when there is non-disjunction, it means that there is no separation. Okay, that's what non-disjunction is. Now sometimes we have that happen in our chromosome. So you've got your diploid chromosome there, that's going to be 46. Okay, I'm going to use the numbers rather. We're going to end up with 23 and 23. Then we have this is meiosis 1 and then we have meiosis 2. So there's another 23 there and another 23 here, okay? And everything's just hunky-dory. Everybody's happy, okay? Except, oh, sorry, except when there's a spanner in the works. And for some or other reason, one of the homologous chromosomes don't separate out. So instead of 46, uh, 46 chromosomes going 23, 23, we end up with 24 chromosomes here. So we've got 21 plus two homologous chromosomes, okay, I mean 22 plus two homologous chromosomes is going to give us our 24. And here, these poor little guys now have 22. They are going to be minus one chromosome. Okay, and when that happens, we call it non-disjunction because this one decided they weren't going to divide. So at the end of the day, this little Gamete is going to have 24, that one's going to have 24, and this one's only going to have 22 and 22. So what they're showing us here in our diagram is our little empty one there and our little empty one there. So this would have been from the other side, the other part of meiosis 2. And here we have our little chromosome. So they say, explain why... The gametes present, uh, represented in C and D do not have any chromosomes. Easy, I've just explained it to you. It's non-disjunction. It didn't join. Remember, the word junction comes from join. So if there's a junction, it's where there's a join. So this is disjunction means to separate. And non-disjunction means they did not separate. They stayed together. Okay, so non-disjunction of, cro oh, mm -mm, let's do this, homologous chromosome 21 during anaphase 1. Okay, that's where the issue came. So what happened? Therefore, both chromosomes 21 moved to one pole. Okay, how easy is that? But they didn't divide. They just decided, mm -mm, we like each other too much. And if you remember our joke that we did right in the beginning, it's saying, ah, it's my sister chromatid. That's exactly what happens here. They decide, uh-uh, we're staying together. We are not separating during anaphase. Remember, anaphase is the apart phase. Okay, let me get another color here. The gamete A is involved in fertilization. Describe how this may result in Down syndrome. Now, people remember Down syndrome. So A, Down syndrome will have 24 chromosomes. Okay, I mean, 24 plus 23 is going to be 47. And that is what results in a Down syndrome child. Don't be thrown because they say in a male, okay? Because people tend to think only women uh, um, have, have uh, chromosomes that have 24 chromosomes and non-disjunction. It's not true. Men have it too, but it's very, very rare. All right, so how do we go with this? We say gamete A 
has 24 chromosomes. Okay? Which is not normal, hey? You know that. All right. Then, when it fertilizes, a normal egg or ovum, egg cell or ovum, with 23 chromosomes, what's going to happen? The resulting zygote, okay, remember your zygote's diploid, it's got two sets, it's got one set of chromosomes from dad, one set of chromosomes from mom, except that this zygote now is going to have or has 47 chromosomes. Why? Because it has 40, um, 44 chromosomes plus 3 chromosome number 21s. Okay, it's got three of them. Not two, three. Not one from mom, one from dad. It's got two from dad and one from mom. Chromosome 23. And that's called, when you have three chromosomes or three of the same chromosomes, people, it's called trisomy. So let me just quickly write that for you so you see it. Um, when there are three of the same, it's called tri, means three, so me, which refers to your chromosomes, all right, or your chromosome number. So tri, three, so me, three chromosomes. And it's normally, for a Down syndrome child, it will be at chromosome 21. Due to the process of crossing over, the chromosomes in diagram A and B appear different to each other. Identify the phase of meiosis during which crossing over, that meant you should know this by now, why do I keep doing this? Pro phase one. It happens in pro phase one. Why? Because there's no crossing over in pro phase two, people. None. So it has to happen in pro phase one. All right. Due to the process of crossing over, the chromosome and diagram A and B appear different to each other. Describe the events during crossing over. Okay. We did that. All right. We've already gone through crossing over. So I'm going to quickly just give you a recap. We have the chromatids of homologous chromosomes lying next to each other or adjacent to each other. Adjacent means next to. So next to each other, cross over and, or, or uh, um, overlap and touch. Where they touch, it's called the chiasma. That's the point where they touch. And what happens then? The DNA is swapped from one chromatid to the other chromatid. So that segments, entire segments are swapped. And then... They go back to being where they are. So what have they done? We now have genetic variation occurring. All right. And then I think there was one little question here. So just refer back to the other question where we did, I think it's question one. Then it says, due to the process of crossing over, the, di the chromosomes in, in, in diagram one and two appear different from each other. So what is the significance of crossing over in a natural, uh, in natural selection? People, the minute there is crossing over, we are going to have genetic variation. If it's genetic variation for, for uh, um, advantageous or good characteristics, the organism will survive, it will help it to survive, and that's great because then it can continue to reproduce. If those characteristics are not great, well, what happens? The organism dies and they can't pass those characteristics on to the next generation. Okay. Okay.